part, and then we'll pick up where we left off. All right. So here's the warning again for today. The warning is it's four things. We've done two of them. We got two left. Of the four things, we get words, right? The words are not very helpful, right? It's not like, uh, I don't know, the height of something. You know, we understand that. They're just words. If it's not in your book of truth, then you have no chance of getting this. It's got to be in your book of truth. We've already put two of them in there. Also, the words used are confusing. We talk about bisectors, perpendicular bisectors, altitudes, and medians. Stop, man. Um, none of that sticks with you. The only good thing about this entire process is we only get one formula out of all four. It's the very last one that we'll do. We get something out of three of them. One of them is just thrown in there for an interesting thing, right? Three of them will give us something. One of them will give us a formula. The other two tell us something about distances. You have to be able to keep this straight in your brain. It's kind of a big challenge without a book of knowledge. With a book of knowledge, then you simply refer back to it. Hey, they start talking about this thing called a circumcenter. I don't know. It's all jumbled in my head. So you open up your book of truth to where it says circumcenter. You read it and it says, oh, the circumcenter is equidistance to the three vertices. Got it. Okay. But if that's not in your book of truth, you don't have a chance of uh, getting any of this stuff right. So here we go. Quick review. Uh, we basically talked about two things yesterday out of four. There's actually five vocabulary words. The first one's just concurrent lines. And none of you have problems with this idea of concurrent lines. Concurrent lines are when you have lines that come together, two or more, at one single point. One single point. Dan, what speech am I about to give you? Literally, if you're not looking at the board or you're not writing down notes, you're not paying attention in a geometry class, in a history class, right? If you're not writing down notes or looking at the board, you don't have to look at the teacher, but you got to look at the board to see what they're right now. When I walk in here after lunch, I see a lot of people doing neither one of those two things. They're not taking notes. They're not looking at the board. The, the instructions or whatever they're talking about is on the board. This is a learned skill of uh, how do I pay attention in class, okay? All right, um, I did this proof already. Uh, the bottom line was you wrote this down as theorem 10.1. 10.1 says the following. It says in black, if you have angle bisectors of a triangle, they all meet together at one point. That point is called an in center. And the so what about it is the red part. The so what about an in center is that an in center is equidistance to the three sides. That means the little red dotted line here that goes IT, IS, and IR are all equal to each other. Are you going to remember that? No, no chance of remembering that. Let's just be honest, right? You're not going to remember this. That's why it has to be in your book of truth. So what would a problem like this look like? It'll simply say that IT is 4, and it'll say something about IR or IS. Well, if IT is 4, they're all 4. It's an easy thing to deal with as a consequence. Are you going to remember that the center is called an I, uh, in center? No. Are you probably going to remember that it's made with angle bisectors? Probably no. And are you going to remember that all three are the distance between the in center and three sides of the same? No. Which is why it's got to be in the book of truth. Okay, I'll stop saying that over and over again. So that is called the in center. 10.1 refers to the in center. In centers are equidistance to the three sides. Cool. That was one of four. The second one, skip the proof because we already did it. The second one talks about another point of concurrency with triangles. It's not made with angle bisectors. It's made with perpendicular bisectors. So they left off the little angle right here, the right angle, and that it was a bisector. They left that part out. Generally speaking, that's what you will forget, that it is a perpendicular bisector. So therefore, you can say something about the three sides of the triangle. Hey. Uh, it's a perpendicular bisector, 90 degrees, and it breaks that side up in half. 
The black part is the condition to start the whole thing. The red is the consequence. The consequence of having this thing, I wish that was a C because it's called a circumcenter. The consequence of the circumcenter is that is equidistance to the corners, the vertices of the triangle. And this is kind of where we, I'm sorry, this is kind of where we left off. So if you have what's called a circumcenter, I wish that was a C, not an O. Uh, if you have a circumcenter, then it is equidistance, not to the sides, because it's clearly closer to this side than it is to that side, but it's equidistance to the three corners, okay? Big picture, none of this is hard understanding when I say one of them all by itself. Okay, it's equidistance to the corners. And if it was just that one by itself, you wouldn't forget this. But there's four of these. One's made with angle bisectors. This one is made with perpendicular bisectors. And we got two more. Okay. All right. Uh, that was 10.2. Uh, 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 and it's called a circumcenter. Because everyone caught up with at least up to 10.2. Okay. So it's not going to take me 30 minutes to get through the rest of the stuff. All right. So that means we're going to be doing homework together. All right. It's getting slightly confusing because if I taught this all in one class, then your head would be spinning a little bit right now. Two left. All right. Oh, by the way, this will not be a proof. We will not prove this. Uh, the book chooses to prove what I'm about to show you, which will be a theorem, 10.3, in chapter 13. We get a little bit. It makes it easier once we learn the stuff in chapter 13 to prove this one. Okay. So we're gonna prove this one in chapter 13. All right, do you see the three triangles that I just drew? Are there any other types of triangles that are left off by angle measurements? Did I leave off any triangle by angle measurements? No, okay, so these are the, no, by side measurements certainly, but by angle measurements, you either got acute, obtuse, or right triangle, that's it. All right, I'm gonna draw altitudes for these three triangles, each one. Do you remember what an altitude is? Well, that would be true for a right triangle. What about for an acute and obtuse? What's, a, what's an altitude? And I'll give you a hint. It starts at one of the vertices. Okay, how? That's the important part of an altitude. Say again? Cutting in half. That's a median. What was an altitude? Starts with a vertice and goes to the other side and makes a right, right angle. That's, that's an altitude. Everybody with me? So I'm going to connect the uh, corners of a triangle to the opposite side and make a right angle. That's called a altitude. All right. So I'm going to do it to the three corners of my acute one. All right. There's one. Uh, there's two. And it turns out this would be the thing I would have to prove to you. And I'm just saying we're not going to do it until chapter 13. It turns out that they do join together. And for an acute triangle, where do they join together? Where? In the center of the triangle. Okay. Now, we got to be careful with the word center. What does that mean? Well, just say on the inside. How about that? So for an acute triangle, it joins on the inside. Was that true for a right triangle? Well, a right triangle already has two altitudes, right? From, the, from an, an edge, or sorry, from a corner, a vertice, down to the opposite side, make a right angle. Well, there's already a right angle there. So there's that red line. That's its altitude. Here's the second altitude and the third altitude. So for a right triangle, where do the altitudes meet? Okay, they meet basically on the triangle. Okay. And for the obtuse, all right, there's the right angle. Well, how do I draw? How do I go from here to the opposite side? Well, that's kind of hard to do, right? Unless I extend this line a little bit, same thing with this corner. How do I go to the opposite side? I would have to extend that side. So let's do that. I'm going to extend that side, and I can draw that altitude. Are you watching, Manny? Yeah. Okay. Well, I need to extend the other side. Draw that one. They don't intersect, or do they? If I go in the opposite direction, instead of going where the arrow is pointing, if I go in the opposite direction and extend the lines, notice they actually do. Acute triangles, where do they meet? Right triangles? On the triangle. Obtuse? Outside. Okay. I uh, haven't proven it to you. I've proven it for three, these three specific triangles, but I haven't proven it in general. Uh, we're going to prove this in chapter 13. 
But the bottom line is altitudes will meet at a point of concurrency. We get no formulas, we get no measurements. This is the only point of concurrency that's kind of like, okay, great, so what? This is literally a so what one, okay? We're still gonna write it down. All right, put this in your book of truth, 10-3. We will prove this in chapter 13. Here's all it says. It's the shortest uh, theorem in the entire book. It simply says the altitudes of a triangle come together at a point of concurrency. That's it. We get nothing from it. We don't get a formula. We don't get distances. It's the one out of the four that's kind of like, uh, okay, great. Thank you for telling me that. It doesn't help me. But altitudes do mean. We also are going to give this a name. What, what? Of all the things that can give a good name to, why would they give this one a name? Well, in math, we are always interested in things that are uh, unique. And this one is unique, the, the fact that the altitudes do come together. All right, this one has a weird name. Let's see, the first one is called an in center, the second one is called a circumcenter. Uh, this one is called the spelling center. Uh, do you know what the, uh, the, the fancy word for spelling is? Orthography. Have you ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. You do orthography. That's just a fancy word for spelling. If you look at old books about, uh, you know, when schools first started, you'd have reading, writing, and orthography in math. Orthography would just means class on spelling. Uh, this one is called the ortho center. Ortho center. Something like orthopedic. Agreed. So that it certainly has the same root, orthodontics orthopedic, orthography, orthocenter. Anybody Latin? You had it for two years, didn't you? You were only here for one year? Yeah. This is their third year Latin. What? Oh, you're tenth graders, though. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, thank God. The the so, ninth graders yeah, is their third year. Yeah, we only. Have oh my God, the fourth quarter. Well, well my last last year, uh, by the way, the current seventh graders will take four years of Latin. Wow. Yeah. I'm so glad we're in the grade. What is? Wait, why did they make? Because that's the requirement for graduation, four years. Four for years them? Well, clearly you weren't here long enough because you weren't here in sixth grade. Well, yeah. Sixth well, grade is when Latin instruction starts. For them, it's four years. For them, it will be four years. So like the current eighth graders have, have already had two years. They'll get four years. Current seventh graders get four years. You guys get two years. And the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the current ninth graders get eight, uh, three years. All right, here we go. So ortho center, cool, whatnot. It's an interesting fact. We get nothing from it other than its name. All right. If all the altitudes are drawn and they meet in the center, and that center is called the ortho center. All right, last one. I will also not prove this until chapter 13. All right, think about this. A median. All right. I define a median as going from a vertex, not uh, down to the opposite side and make a right angle, but I go to the middle of one of the sides. So I find the middle, I go to it. I find the middle, where's the middle? I go to it. I find the middle, I go to it, and we find out that guess what? And they meet at a point, it will be inside. And that inside where they meet will have a name to it. It is the most useful one, and is the one that we get a formula from. We only get one formula out of this entire class. A okay. median drawn from a vertice to the opposite sides or, or to the opposite sides middle. We okay? That's a median. Okay. That concurrency where the uh, medians intersect is called the centroid. 
uh, an interesting, uh, do I have any triangles? I don't have any triangles. An interesting. <laughs> you chewed a triangle? Is it a full triangle? It's got to have a center. Yeah, but you'll see why here in a second. An interesting side note of a centroid, it's actually where triangles will balance. If I take a triangle and I find its center by finding its medians, it will actually balance on your finger, any triangle. Right? It's, the, it's, the, it's where all the weight comes together. I shouldn't say that. Let me say it more uh, correctly. It's an uh, equal distribution of weight all around that center point, center of mass. Right? So I don't know, parlor trick, if you ever want to balance a triangle on your finger, you find it's centroid. How do you find it's centroid? You find where the medians meet together. Okay, I said we get a formula from this. Now, once again, I'm not going to prove this until chapter 13. Uh, we're going to get a formula from this. All right, everybody stop doing a look at the board. This is the weakest, without a proof, explanation of how this works ever, right? Uh, do you see each medium? There's three of them, yes? You see it? You see where they meet together? It breaks each median up into two parts. Can you see the two parts? How are you going to describe the two parts? Small one and big one. We're going to use that. You got a small one and a big one. Can you see it? So CO, here's your small one, OX. Here's your big one, XC. BN, the small one is NX, the big one is BX. AM, here's the small one, here's the big one. You with me? It ends up being, I'm going to prove in chapter 13, not today, ends up being there's a mathematical relationship between those two, the big and the small. And the mathematical relationship is this. Thought I had on the slide. I don't. Next slide. You ready? That was the interesting factoid, right? Uh, what's interesting, we'll prove this in chapter 13, is that the short piece is one third and the long piece is two thirds of the whole thing. In yellow, here's what we need to write down for theorem uh, 10.4. If you have a centroid, remember that's made by constructing medians, three medians from the corner of the vertice to the middle of the opposite side, where they come together, that point of concurrency is called the centroid. And it breaks the medians, all three of them up into one third and two thirds. You got a short piece, which is one third of the whole. You got a medium piece, AX, which is one third of AM. NX is one third. Bx is two thirds. Ox is one third. Cx is two thirds. Now we're not going to claim the medians themselves are equal to each other. That would be true for a equilateral triangle. But for a scaling triangle like this one, each individual median is broken up into one third, two thirds. One third, two thirds. One third, two thirds. One third. It's the only formula we get. You're like, well, where's the formula? So Matt, what's the actual formula? Uh, by the way, this is what's in the book. It doesn't literally say a formula. If it breaks the pieces up into one third, two thirds, what's the formula? You're, you're, you're on the one yard line one. equals the whole thing. So if I use letters here, give me it for CO. Oh, CX plus XO equals CO. Yeah, and if I use the numbers, it would be one third of CO plus two thirds of CO is equal to CO, right? There's a formula. So there's your one third plus two thirds equals the whole thing. Okay. Uh, by the way, is that an easy concept? One third, two thirds? Most high school students don't actually realize the relationship between one third, two thirds. So I'll ask you, Wes, what's the relationship between one third and two thirds? Uh, well, well, clearly Wes is on top of it. A lot of high school students don't get that. So I'll say it again. He said, well, clearly one third is, one third is half of two thirds. And so for a lot of high school students, they can't wrap their head around, wait, thirds are like 33% and half is 50%. They, they can't wrap their heads around that. 
Yeah, when we talk about one third, two thirds, we're talking about the whole thing. But if I restrict myself to just the two pieces, one piece is half of the other piece. This piece is half of, or double this piece. There, I said it correctly there. That's relate. That's the real relationship that you got to wrap your head around. Yeah, there is a one third, two thirds, but the true relationship is the short piece is half of the long piece, or the long piece is double the short piece. That's what you'll need for homework. Because they'll give you numbers, and you might have to use the one third, two thirds if you're talking about the whole thing. But if you're talking about the short piece and the big piece, or whatever words we use, one third, two thirds, then you got to remember it's half or double. Okay, are we good? That's four things that we've done. We're doing yesterday and today, and boy, will they get rambled, John, uh, jambled. I'm making up words here. Uh, they will get uh, messed up in your head very easily. One third, two thirds. So this green piece is one third. The blue piece, where's the blue piece? There it is. Blue piece is two thirds. And that's for each individual median. And once again, unless it's equilateral, I'm not going to claim that the medians themselves are equal to each other. It would be true for isosceles and equilateral, some of them for isosceles. It's true for all the medians for equilateral. All right, so I just divide a couple slides here to wrap our head around this. Okay, so Chandler, pick a piece there and give me something intelligent that you can say if they are medians. He said that CX is two thirds of CF. You see that? True or false? That's true. All right. Ethan, give me something intelligent about the shape other than what he said. GX is one third G. Okay, I, I guess we can stop right there, right? Are we good? All right, all of those statements are true. Uh, using math words, we've got a short piece, we've got a long piece. Give me another one. Well, give me one more intelligent thing about this. Uh, is half of G. Even better. Say that one more time. Is half of G. Oh, oh gosh, no. Wait, CG is what? Is half of GB. Actually, CG is equal to BG. Because you're because remember, how are you constructing these medians? Medians go from a corner to where? To oh, they're, they're congruent. Whoa. All right, they're congruent. I thought what you were going to say was that C, or sorry, GX is equal to F. Oh, no, not true. I thought you were going to say that GX is half of, which is kind of how you started, GX is half of A. There you go. That's what I thought. That's where I thought you were going. So we can either use the one third, two thirds, which what, what both these boys did, or you could use what you did. The third and final thing is what you, you eventually stumbled on was that the, when you have medians here, then well, GC is equal to BG. Okay, cool. Uh, and that's kind of what we said right there. Okay, short pieces, long pieces, and the relationships uh, are as such. You're, if you're the short piece, you're one third of the whole. If you're the short piece, you're one third of the whole. And if you're the long piece, you're two thirds of the whole. Lastly, next slide, we'll talk about the relationship between the long and the short, right? Oh, I'm sorry. A lot of clicking. If there's something wrong with the book, it's this one. I mean, you shouldn't have to wait two chapters to get a proof for something. If you can't prove it, then why are you introducing it? That was kind of like how I started the year by saying, I'm not going to show you anything that I can't prove. And I'm telling you literally, uh, I can't prove it until chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Do we need this to prove this? You don't need this to prove. What you need is the stuff that's in chapter 13. Now, the better question is, are you going to use what's in chapter 13 as proof using this? As proof of what's in chapter 13, no, that would that would be a rules violation there. You can't use it, something that you're about to learn in the future to prove something in the past, right? It's got to be a linear progression. All right, back to the last piece, which is, let's talk about the relationship between one third we just did. Uh, West knocked it out of the park, right? One's half of the other, one's double the other, okay? 
All right, so let's look at just the red. Danny, you see the red? Okay, so I'm gonna give you a, a little bit of information, right? The short piece is one third of the whole and the medium piece or the long piece is two thirds of the whole. Okay, that's your, that's your setup, okay? I'm gonna tell you that CF is 30. Can you see CF? Tell me anything you can tell me with that given bit of information. If CF is 30, okay, because they're equal to each other, right? Because it literally says that this is one third and that's, oh wait, it says two thirds. So if the whole thing is 30, and you can pick one, either the short one or the long one, which one you want. CG, we don't know anything about. But we can tell something about FX or CX if CF is 30. FX is half of the thing because it says half. I'm saying from C to F, the red is 30. Can you tell me how long FX is? So it's, you're right. 15 is not a third of 30. When you divide 30 by three, please. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Yes. So FX is, okay, so if, if FX, uh, Danny, FX is 10, then how big is XC? It's going to be 20. Very good. Okay. All right. Can you? God, that was painful. It wasn't painful. And I know why. Okay. Okay. Here, here's a, a better question for you. Why did he say it was 15? Because he thought it was half. Why would he think that? I know why. Why would he think it's half? What were you drawing? No, no, no. You can think this through. Why would he think it's half? Because it kind of looks like it. For one third of half. He said it's half of that. So you would think that that's true. One third is half to two thirds. That's true. That's why he probably said it was half. Because the previous slides, what we were talking about, that this is half of that. Kind of makes sense. And, and I'm going to go back to my original point of starting the classes. Will this get jumbled in your head? Heck yeah, it will. That's why it's got to be in your book of truth. And if there's something that needs to have an example, it's probably this, because you'll forget that relation. And it's an easy relationship. Yeah, there is a 50% going on here for something. Short piece is half of the larger piece. But when we talk about the whole thing, we're talking about one-thirds, two-thirds. And like I said, I see this every year, that that easy concept gets lost very quickly. All right, who do I want to pick on now? Connor? All right, you see the red piece? Where's the long piece? Where's the short piece? And the short piece is? Okay, I'm going to give you one bit of information now. Uh, one third, two thirds, that's what you just said. Okay, here's your one bit of information. AX is 32. Now tell me anything that you can tell me if AX is 32. You gotta tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> Say again. Yeah, so two thirds of an unknown quantity is 32, agreed, okay? But I want a known quantity now. So you're either gonna tell me how big is the short piece or how big is the long piece, or the whole piece, sorry. And, and if you heard the conversation we just had, one of those is really easy to do. And once you got that one, you can get the second one. What's the relationship between this piece and this piece? Thinking about the conversation we just had. What? Half. Ah. Therefore, XG is? Tell me what you're thinking. No, AX is 32. You just said that is what? So what's half? Just tell me what you're thinking. I'll do the math for you. What do I got to do? 
16. Okay. Now, can you tell me how long the AG is? And you can tell me what you're thinking. Yeah. 48. There you go. That's what the homework will look like. It's two relationships. There's a half or a double E, and then there's a one third, two thirds. So there's your two types of problems. All right. Who's got questions? Danny. Okay. What's the relationship between this piece, this piece, and the whole other thing? Mm -hmm. It says AX is 32. It says XG is 16. So what's the relationship between this piece, this piece, and the whole thing? You just have it. You got it. Questions? Chandler, did you actually do all the homework? No, I'm still there. <laughs> so what I part? Got just six, and then I gave up. There are three things we got to remember. Right? Let's wrap this up. Three things we got to remember. There are four words. It's the the one word that we're going to kind of toss out because it's neat, but it doesn't give us anything. Is orthocenter. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, orthocenter. We got centroid. One third, two thirds, fifty percent. Sorry, fifty percent of that. We had in center distances from the in center to the sides are all equal. That's made with angle bisectors, and then we have circumcenter, and that's the one where the distance between the circumcenter and the vertices are all the same. And then we have this one, the formula one. That's what your homework is going to be on. All right. Yes. You okay. All right, here's what we're going to do. We got 15. No, no. We got 15 minutes left. Let's open our books and get started on homework. And that allows me to walk around to give some help if we need some help. Yes? Brianna, are Bri you on, online right now? Jenna? No, they're usually online. I can check. Yeah, there's nobody online right now. Well, they're dead. That went dark really quickly. The gnomes got them. The tricksters, they don't kill people. I mean, if it's I mean, if it's a, well, I guess that would be the ultimate yeah. trick. I mean, they hold themselves so, the the I mean, think about it. They were tricks on the which is why Seth is the perfect middle. He's, he's too tall for no. No, but he wants to turn into it. Tell Seth, tell Seth that. He's literally sitting in that chair right now. You can't Seth, you're too tall to be a gnome. He could be an elf. Maybe I'm a gnome. Yeah, he's a gnome. He's a gnome now. All right. The higher oh, so. Danny, open up your book, get started, so I can help I, you. I'm writing my homework. Okay. Uh, um, Mike, are you finished? Yeah, I finished it. Easy or hard? Just pretty easy. Mm. All right. Mike says it's pretty easy. That must mean it's medium. It's pretty it easy. Wasn't. I don't want to do You didn't finish it by your own admission. You didn't finish it. I didn't do the no, sixth do grade, it. which was just drawing. So that sucks. Or I did some fifth grade. Make sure you tell your first boss that before you get fired. I did some of it, boss. Uh, the safety part, no, I didn't do that. Can you do a decimal? You, you could get a decimal. Remember, one third, two thirds, you're going to get 15 decimals. So if it's not a nice, friendly number that's divisible by three. Like seven. Like seven, right? Uh, what do they want you to do? Just say, just draw a point outside of the triangle. Yeah. So we have a triangle. Yeah, it's just a triangle. They want you to make intersecting points. Which? Oh, they want the altitude ones. Yeah. So that's obtuse. Okay. So you got to start with an obtuse triangle. So just make an obtuse angle and then connect. Okay. So you have to go from vertex to side, making a right angle. So I'm going to extend this one from straight down. There's my first altitude, right? Pick another, pick another corner. 
I'm going to go from here to the opposite side. The opposite side's right here. Well, so we're going to extend that straight down. Yeah. And where's the third one we didn't do? Well, that was easy. And remember, these are all right angles. So the ones that have right angles, they got to intersect. So do they intersect right now? So if we extended them, is that where they intersect? They intersect in that direction? It's the other direction. So if we extend them, we find out they intersect right here. Yeah, I still don't think I'm good. We'll do another one. And, and literally, that's all they want you to do on that one. You're just reinforcing the fact that for um, obtuse triangles that the, what's it called? What's the word? The ortho center happens outside of the triangle. If it's a right triangle, the ortho center happens on the triangle. Uh, if it's acute, uh, the ortho center is on the inside. Like I said, we get nothing from the ortho center, nothing. It's just neat. All right, where's your triangle? Oh, exactly. I don't have any tape. I, can't do this. I was going to have staple it. Well, you can't staple your plastic. Are banned but if we were to draw the medians of each side where they intersect, that point would be literally, it's going to be this hole right here, would be where this thing would bounce. It's more impressive when you have a larger triangle. <laughs> well, you have to draw the, you have to draw the, you have to find the center. And that's the median. So where the medians come together, it's going to happen right here for the center. But where the medians come together, you can literally put your finger on it, and it will the, it will balance the. But yours are going to happen in, on the center. So for like a right angle, you put your finger right on that point. Well, but remember that's not where the uh, the, the the centroid happens. <clears throat> for a right angle, the centroid happens on the middle. Of a right, you're thinking of ortho center. So centroid is the center of balance one. Yeah. What number? Say again. What number? Centroid is on this one. It is uh one three. You're trying to figure out. What oh, uh, what question was that, Ethan? That was oh, that was one B. One B. Yeah. I'm sorry. Centroid. Centroid on this one. So wait, how is that? It's holding them together because who's got three? So we need usually on questions like that. I just find two of them and then hopefully it works for the third one. So we need a triangle where the angle bisector and the perpendicular bisector are exactly the same, okay? So the only way that would happen, right? For an angle bisector to also be a perpendicular bisector, the only way that that happens, right? Is if you had a right angle and we did an angle bisector. If we did an angle bisector, you get 45, 45. I mean, the question is, would this also be a right angle? Mm, I don't know. Hmm. Um, well, let's see. Uh, it also needs to be go to the middle. So the question is, does when you have a right angle, I'm trying to jog your memory. When we have a right angle and we draw that right there, does that make an isosceles triangle, yes or no? Because remember, the other other requirement is that this also needs to make it to be a median. So, is that true? Is that true? Does it does it make an isosceles triangle? Well, let's let's remember uh, reflexive property, right? We got two triangles. Well, there's an angle, so it's right triangle. So I got a. I got a leg, is it a hypotenuse? And I said, if it was an isosceles, so if it's an isosceles, it's that. So the two triangles are congruent, therefore that piece is congruent to this piece. So it's gonna be an isosceles right triangle, would be the only one. Isosceles right triangle. 
Three. One C. What is three C? It's one C. I thought we were doing three. That was one C. Which yeah, one are we right, doing? The right angle one is one C. Which one did we just do? It's three. No, Read it. No, you just had me do something that's not for homework? No. All right, cool. No, that was one Excellent. One that's one nothing. One other one than the right answer. That's not one Okay. You got pranked. No, I gave you the right answer, but he got pranked. Yeah, one C is got well. It's not. I said it had to be a right isosceles. It's just yeah. any right, yeah. right, any right angle for one C. Now the count is figuring. He has to go back and do questions one and two again. You you got the bonus plan. Did you get your glasses fixed yet? No. No. I mean, and not to embarrass you, but can you see the board? <laughs> so how about you sit up here idea. starting tomorrow until you get your glasses no, fixed? I have an idea. What? I have an idea. So I did this back in sixth grade and I started getting my glasses were broken. This is a fact called the pinhole effect. So if you take your fingers like this and make like a pinhole and look through it, you can see perfectly fine. So you want him to sit through the whole class like this? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly like this. Oh, do that whole class. How do you do that? How do you just well, little... is that true for all or is that true? Are you near sorry for us? So I for um I mean you're sorry. Oh my god, it's true. Yeah. Actually, I could wear your glasses. You should show you when you like his glasses. Yeah, I told you, I'm not I am not i am being serious. Why is this true? I don't know why it works. All I know is that it works. Really? Oh yeah, I can see. Oh wow. Yeah, I think they have very good description. Yeah. I didn't realize what are you description. You're far side, okay. No, I think. Well, then if you're far side, you should be good. Near side, but yeah, near side. I don't know. So it's the opposite. So when you say you're far side, it means you can see far. You can't see near. So you are you're near side, right? So I'm not no joke. I'm serious. If you can't see the board, this is all your classes until you get to classes. Just ask the teacher. That's crazy. I mean, I don't want you sitting here like, well, I know he's talking, but I can't see anything on the board. I mean, he was using Google Class. I know he was, but that's. Ridiculous, like right? That's what I said. I said You're either going to sit there the whole class like this, or you can do the mic thing. I don't know if that really works. It does. It, it does. does. It certainly does. Yeah, but I got to drive my car. <laughs> it's hard. And I don't have a Tesla, so it doesn't drive itself. Well, then you wouldn't need the seat. So it'd be completely pointless if you needed to not use your hands. Mm. That's true. All right, read it. I don't think that's your eye. How is it that you on what is my eye? Danny, you did the Connor thing. That's your eye. Okay. Okay. Connor, you got a twin over here. Uh, a little school. Starting here. Alright. So, yeah. That's number three. Would you take my coat away if I put that on right now? Are you cold? Yes. Oh, you, you people are going to complain. It's either too hot or too cold. That's all you ever do. It's never too hot. It's no, never, never too hot. hot. It's always cold in every room. I'll make you sweat right now. Everybody, 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 please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Like crazy. Yeah. Right? The, all the rooms are so cold. Like, you think cold right now? Yeah. Yeah. It's not cold. It's not cold. You guys are just definitely cold. Wait. It's just, it's it's just cool. Colorado kids. You're the ones that are supposed I to be outside. I wasn't born in Colorado. I don't even like the cold. Yeah, I don't think it's cold at all. Who's that kid that always wore short pants? Tucker. Tucker. The cool Tucker. Tucker. Tucker? Yeah. He didn't wear a jacket at he, all. But he was doing that on purpose. He was cold as as you all get out. He just doing it because we were making a deal about it. He'd be like, I'm not cold. It was like minus 20. And he's I don't even like pants. Colorado. What? It has a bipolar disorder. Yeah, it doesn't know what it wants to do ever. Yeah, I'm be. I mean, we're going to get like six inches of snow tonight. It's cold. It was 62 degrees during the fire drill yesterday. It was so nice. I wish you couldn't have my soccer practice today because it was. Who do you play with? I play for Falcon High. I just go to the They got a good team this year or not a good team? It's cold. 
we don't have. I know this whole season's kind of scuffed. So I mean, I mean, but you're playing guys, games. Yeah, we're playing games. We're playing like we're playing a string of teams, and then we'll play that same team again. On a so scale like, of one to ten, rate your team's intelligence. It doesn't matter intelligence. It matters they're they're athletes. Yeah, I mean, we don't have. Can they kick the ball into the net? That's all that matters. We but do they understand that? <laughs> <laughs> That's just it. Like some people, they don't. They try to like do this trick move and they're giving it to the other team. We don't it's rate. Like, we don't rate our part. athletes by their intelligence. We rate them by. Like, no, the you should. Part because is how the JV people go around trying to heal. Are you in varsity or JV? I'm on varsity. Every JV player I've ever met always thinks they're the hot stuff. It's okay. It's, it's so not so that funny. they think they're so the funny. hot stuff. Our JV does. Oh, he broke my ankles. No, it's not like that. It's like they try to do a move and it has like a. Five percent success, rate. right? Or, or it's, like it's a or they, or they we do the same thing in golf. We do exactly the same thing in golf. We're like, oh, I know I can make this shot, and it's like, there's no chance. There's no ch why are you? Because you're going over water two hundred. You're going That's into the water. That is my dad. He's like, oh, I can make it. This is green, like five hundred yards. Yeah. I'm like, no, I got hope this no, season. you can't. I I well, I mean, he did hit the ball. It was like three feet away from the green. 